Hello, thought I'd give uh, another update on my boring mill. I've actually made some progress. Um, I finally got a bunch of work in my shop finished and for the last three weeks I've been working on nothing but this boring mill. And when I started out, sad to say 18 months ago when I first got it, I started out with the column and the headstock and I am almost done. All I have left to do is make new way wipers and install them, which I'm gonna to do today. Uh, and after that, everything is done on the column and headstock. Um, as you can see here, uh, this end of the machine needs lots of work still. Um, I got the table, the rotary table, and the cross slide that it sits on removed. Um, they have to be obviously cleaned and oil lines blown out and all that and uh, check them for damage and things like that. I've already been washing and bagging parts from the uh, feed shafts and gears and clutches. I have more soaking and varsol over there. Um, so it's a ongoing process but anyways by the end of today I should have the way wipers on and the headstock and that'll be complete. Um, I spent about four days doing the wiring. Um, this machine was supplied with two wiring diagrams of which parts of each one apply to the machine and they're both in German. Um, so it took about four days to muddle my way through that. Uh, I didn't want to just hook the wiring back up the way I had unhooked it 18 months ago. I wanted to understand how it worked because I knew there were some things on this that didn't work and I wanted to make sure that they did work when I was finished so I needed to kind of figure out uh, how it all worked so I could make sure that it, it uh, all worked the way it did when it was new. Um, just one example behind this, you can't really see it in here but behind here is a, a feed brake and whenever you stop the feed it applies a brake and stops the feed instantly, which is handy when you're, especially when you're doing rapid traverse. Um, it wasn't even hooked up. It was just sitting there. There's no wires going to it or anything. So I had to run new wires to it and clean it and put it back together. Fortunately, it works. So, so since the last update, I got the back end of this put together, the rest of the gears, I replaced some bearings and the uh, feed shaft that runs here. I uh, got it back in, uh, got the wiring done as I just mentioned, um, got the feed shaft and lead screw uh, cleaned up and installed. I repacked the bearings on the lead screw, bearings are up top in the column cap, and put a new bearing in the feed shaft. I had to cut a new keyway and replace the keys in the feed shaft because they were really worn out. Um, but I got that done and installed. And uh, the other thing was the counterweight chain. The original one was pretty damaged and the owner's manual is quite clear in their warnings that you do not want that chain to break. It says it will cause severe damage to the machine if it happens. So <clears throat> they implore you to make sure it's in good shape and to inspect it regularly and oil it weekly. And the chain was in really bad shape. So I ordered a new chain wasn't exactly the same as the old one, but it's um, about eight times stronger than it needs to be. And I just had to make up those two links there to join the chain to the yoke. And I had to do the same on the counterweight end that's in the column. So I got that hooked up. So now the head is balanced. Um, one thing I noticed, I, I have this running now. I can make the head go up and down, turn the spindle, etc., And I'll do that right away. Uh, one thing I noticed was, um, I ran it up and down a couple of times under rapid traverse and then I felt the lead screw and the lead screw nut and they were cold, not even warm. Uh, on my radial drill and my horizontal mill, the knee lead screw on the horizontal mill and the lead screw that raises and lowers the arm on the radial drill, a couple of trips up and down and the um, lead screw is quite warm uh, because it's required to lift the entire weight of the arm and head, which is several thousand pounds. On the case of my horizontal mill, it's required to lift the knee and table and saddle, which is probably several thousand pounds. But on this, um, with the counterweight, 
I'm sure there's only a few hundred pounds of difference that the lead screw has to lift. So it makes it very easy on the lead screw. Uh, so I'm happy to see that. Um, but anyways, I'll fire it up and uh, show that it's actually finally working. So that's running at 630 RPM. Feeds are just engaged by pressing this button. And you can see. the update um, so far that's what I've managed to get done in the last three weeks um, uh, this is gonna be quite a bit of work as you can see it's it's very dirty it's just like everything else in this machine it's absolutely filthy so I'm gonna lift this saddle off hopefully over Christmas and uh, I think I have to use my forklift I don't think my crane will lift this and then I've got to wash it all out and, and clean underneath where the slideways are. And uh, the same thing, lead screws, feed shafts, all that stuff will get clean. I have bought some new bearings and seals. Um, so I'll put those in and, uh, um, and make sure there's quite a few oil lines on this uh, in the saddle here. Some gears down there that's actually a gearbox that is removed from underneath so once I get the saddle off I'm gonna drop the gearbox and clean everything out and check the bearings and that 
Um, but yeah, I'll get it all clean to make sure the oil lines are working and then just rebuild that and, and that'll be the end. The machine will be done other than I need to put a coolant system on it and install digital readouts. Uh, and then after that, it's just a matter of leveling and hopefully that'll go okay. Anyways, thanks for watching and uh, have a good Christmas and we'll see you in the next video.